Sanger Vampire was a game-winning creature, unlike any other. Though he's no longer popular in competitive decks these days, and is seldom seen outside a commander, so how good was Sanger Vampire actually? Welcome back everybody, this is your host Brody at Alfonso Investments, happily here today to say that I can safely and reliably deliver to you on another amazing video. Thanks a lot to all the Freetreons, and to everybody tuning in around the world, and to those tuning in on the juice, thanks a lot for watching. How good was Sanger Vampire actually? Before we get started, I'm going to take a look at the history of this card, who played it, how it won the Magic the Gathering Championships of the World in 1995, and how it did it unlike any other card in history. How good was Sanger Vampire actually? Hey guys, it's Brody, and today we're going to talk about Sanger Vampire. I've been wanting to do this video for a little while, and since we received the comments from Murray Cooper in the last video, I wanted to thank him and thank all the Freetrons and everybody else who watched that video. It's finally here, and honestly, I'm hoping this is going to be a whole lot of fun. I wanted to cover the Sanger Vampire and talk about how he won the World Championships of Magic the Gathering in 1995, and he did it unlike any other creature. So, before we get to talking about how good Sanger Vampire was actually, we can't do that without discussing a little bit of the lore and where he comes from. As the lineage of the Baron Sanger and the Sanger family of vampires that we saw later in the game in the Homelands expansion, the Sanger Vampire stems from the Sanger family of vampires and at the early ages of the game there was only two different types of vampires which were the Krovican vampires and the Sanger vampires. So paying a little respect to the Sanger Vampire and the Baron Sanger card where the original vampire creature in Magic the Gathering dating all the way back to Alpha, the 4-4 flyer with a 5 casting cost in the uncommon slot costing 2 black and 3 was an immediate deck choice for competitive interest players filling the flying slot and in the beginning of the game. So how good was Sanger Vampire actually? And how did he win the World Championships of Magic the Gathering in 1995, unlike any other creature has done before, or ever done since? In 1995, the World Championships of Magic, 71 players from around the world gathered for a two-day event. In the first day, they played five rounds of sealed, and the second day, five rounds of standard, which back then was known as Type 2. After 30 games, five players were tied at 19 wins, and Blue Key piloting the Rack Control deck, made his way to the top eight and defeated all his opponents and his final opponent, Mark Hernandez, for first place. And the Sanger Vampire was in the deck. So how good was Sanger Vampire? And how did it win the World Championships of Magic in a, a way unlike any other? Well, the deck that Alexander played was a black-white Rack Control deck, which is seen here in front of you folks. Unlike the control decks that you see these days, primarily made up of blue cards, the Rack Control deck had a different way of winning the game and it was especially hard on opponents. While taken to the air with Hypnotic Spectres and punishing the opponent for discarding cards, a couple of copies of the Sanger Vampire was an auto-include because it was a surefire way to fend off incoming Sarah Angels and take them out of the game. This deck used cards like Hypnotic Spectre, Disrupting Scepter, and Him to Torak to strip cards out of the opponent's hand and punish them with the rack for having too few. Balance being included in the deck was a way of tipping the scales back in your favor, and Sanger Vampire was a 4-4 beater that was an easy to choice over the Nightmare. Another interesting couple of interactions with this deck was the Pestilence cards, as well as the possibility that if the creature was tapped and blocked with the Sanger Vampire, it could be killed with the Royal Assassin before it could deal damage, and the Icy Manipulator and the Royal Assassin to destroy creatures at will. Alexander Bloomkey piloted his Rack Control deck all the way to the Winner's Circle in 1995, instilling a permanent place as Sanger Vampire sits on his deck list for Magic Gathering history today. In a format that was previously dominated by Sarah Angel and would be dominated again in the following year, Sanger Vampire has earned its place in the history of the game. Old school players will always love and appreciate Sanger Vampire for the fear that it strikes in opponent's eyes and the damage that it does on the battlefield. 
And although being hideous to look at, it's hard not to love the Sanger vampire as he's depicted here by Anson Maddox on this early rendition of the card. So I hope this answers the question, how good was Sanger Vampire actually? And how did he win the World Championships of Magic the Gathering unlike any other? If you like this video or you'd like to see any other videos, leave a comment in the comment section below. And thanks for all the free trions for watching and everybody tuning in on the Jews. This has been your host Brody at Alfonso Investments. We'll talk to you again next time.